Say I am a patient who has cystic fibrosis. Mm -hmm. Could CRISPR go in into my lungs and and snip out the bad gene that causes the disease? Well, we know that's caused by a particular gene, and we know that in most cases it's a particular spelling misspelling of the gene. Three letters are missing. In that case what we need to do is not clip out the gene, but replace that bit that has a little deletion with the right sequence. As a you know, physician scientist, you might say, could I make a virus that could be sprayed into the lining of the lung that would infect the cells and carry with it a CRISPR with the extra three letters of sequence to be inserted in the right place? Hmm. And if you got into enough cells, that would probably be a pretty good therapy for cystic fibrosis. But of course, the devil's in the details. Can you get that virus to the right place? Can you get it into those cells? Uh, will it be done at high efficiency? Will it make any mistakes along the way? So the, the great thing about CRISPR is you can now imagine, you can conceive the experiment. Then you actually have to do it. And that's a tremendous amount of engineering and it's serious work. So you can understand why I want to say it's amazing. And you also have to be careful and every single cure is going to take a lot of people working together to deliver it. But you couldn't have imagined such a cure. It wasn't even on your to-do list before CRISPR. And now it's on your to-do list and there's a whole lot of things you're going to have to work through to actually make it work. So I think it's inspiring a generation of scientists who had been collecting the defects that cause genetic diseases to say, okay, next generation, you guys go in and fix them.